uh, as late coming as it is, but things had to be confirmed. And things had not been confirmed to me until about noon, shortly after noon today, after a detective's briefing. So this is what I can tell you now. Um, at, uh, so July 15th, we're all aware that uh, there was a case that started in New Haven with the finding of two severed limbs uh, in the area of the State Street Railroad Station, State Court Street. Shortly after, on the same day, uh, two human arms were located a uh, short distance but uh, within uh, a close proximity to the finding of the legs. Uh, on July 24th, uh, after state police uh, forensics investigators and the Office of the Chief Medical Examiner confirmed uh, the legs uh, were those of Mr. Roberson, uh, we now have confirmation that the arms are likely those of Mr. Roberson as well. That information came to us uh, confirmation uh, just uh, recently uh, over the last day or two. Uh, Yesterday, since the identification of the limbs being connected to, to Mr. Roberson, uh, detectives have concentrated greatly on the homeless population in New Haven to try and garner some more information on this very bizarre case. Uh, they were able to uh, tell us uh, that definitively the connection had been made from arms, legs to Mr. Roberson. Detectives had been out speaking, uh, starting up dialogues with a lot of the homeless community in New Haven, uh, as I said, trying to get more information. Yesterday, uh, early in the day, patrol officers and detectives alike uh, spent some time in New Haven Green speaking with homeless people. They gave us information that although the building behind us, the former Salvation Army building, is vacant and should be uninhabited, that this was an area yeah, yeah, that yeah, Mr. Yeah. Robertson uh, certainly may have laid his head. That prompted police, New Haven police, to call in state police and Dabber dogs. Uh, they've been assisting us greatly over the course of the last several weeks. They provided that assistance again. And the dogs went into the building with officers and detectives, and they hit on several locations in the building behind us. It's not just 301 George Street, but also, uh, sorry, I have to read it. It's 271 Crown Street. This is the building behind us with the two big uh, garage doors. Uh, within that, uh, detectives secured a search warrant uh, in the middle of the night last night. The search warrant was signed probably around between 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, that led, that allowed officers, detectives, and uh, state police uh, from the Major Crimes Division to go in there and really continue the search for the warrant. They did locate what they believed last night to be a torso, uh, or I should say additional human remains. We now know after uh, confirmation at noon that this is a human torso that has been located. Uh, that torso was taken, as far as I know, to the Office of the Chief Medical Examiner uh, to once again go through the same process of forensic scrutiny uh, that the limbs had gone through. We do not know, and we will not, as you're now aware, this process takes some time, we do not know at this time that the torso is also that of Mr. Robertson. Continues to be an investigation that now is going to be again uh, kind of in a holding pattern uh, until we get the results from the Office of the Chief Medical Examiner and then from there it goes on to the state forensic lab. Uh, so that's where we are right now. The investigation is still ongoing. And I will stress that at this time, although it seems probable that these cases are linked, at this time they are being treated as separate cases until that forensic evidence. Uh, hopefully, uh, will either link or eliminate that possibility. Uh, last early week, you said you thought it would be a coincidence if you found additional uh, someone else's human remains. Do you and investigators still feel the same way? Uh, I would. I would hope so. I, I would hope we're not dealing with uh, two different cases here. Uh, but as I stressed before, it's very important that we make sure that uh, we're certainly not linking them prematurely. 
uh, and any speculation uh, on that would be exactly that speculation. And you mentioned that the building behind is also part of the investigation, so we've seen the hazmat suits there as well. Correct. Those have been investigators. Correct. Those are investigators from our department, the Bureau of Identification, as well as investigators from the State Police Major Crimes Division. Sir David, this building, 301 George, is not only where human remains were found, but also where Ray Robertson may have last laid his head. The human remains were found on the Crown Street address. I think I said it was 271 Crown Street, not 301 George. However, 301 George is where we believe that uh, that's where officers got information and detectives got information that he may have been staying. Okay. Officer Herman, uh, with the torso, was there a head or no head? Uh, there was not. Mr. Hartman, I have a question. Have you found all of the Lee Van Hamilton, yes. the 24th floor? Yes. Have you found any parts of the, the head of uh, this individual at all? To my knowledge, the head has not been located. Thank you. We're talking about a torso right now. Are there any other reports of missing homeless people? No. no. And uh, I'm glad you bring that up, Ken, because Mr. Roberson had not been reported missing to the Navy Police Department, not in our missing persons database, nor any other database. Uh, and it's it's our belief that from speaking with uh, from our detectives, investigators speaking with people, that it wouldn't be unlike, uh, it wouldn't be abnormal for him to not be seen for some time and then to, to resurface. Was the torch the dialogue with this has been, you know, I, I, I hate to toot our own horn, uh, or, or, but this has been an amazing bit of work by detectives to, to really come up with some answers to a case that we that really baffled us. It's still a baffling case, but to, to be this far, this soon in the investigation, uh, we're very thankful for the trust that the, especially the homeless community put in us to, to give us this information. This is a community that is uh, certainly entrenched in New Haven and, and should not be a forgotten community. These, these are people who are uh, very important to this investigation. They're very concerned themselves. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that. Uh, people are worried, uh, especially as one can only imagine if you're living on the streets and living in shelters and living, uh, you know, hidden, if you're trying to hide yourself from the world for whatever reason, to have that trust in the police has been amazing and it's been very telling to us. So we, we do thank those who have come forward with any information. And we say this often, you know, when we ask the general public for information, we are so appreciative that we get it. Uh, so, you know, kudos to, to all of those who have been forthcoming.